there is the cause, from the cause there is an effect, which is the action, from that effect, that effect becomes the cause for next action. So it is a chain, cause, effect, and that effect becomes the cause to next effect, and so on. So when you are caught, when the mind is caught in this limited chain, and it's always limited, then your response to challenge to that challenge will be very limited. I wonder if you see all this. May I go on? Do we understand a little bit? Of, I, I hope I'm making this clear. If I'm if I'm not making clear, I go over it again, ten times, in different ways, because it's very important. Because to act to that challenge without time interval, the time interval is the response of memory. Can you, are you doing it? You know what sorrow is. All of us know it. Every human being in the world knows what sorrow is. So you know it very well. You may not actually have had any suffering, any sorrow, but you see around you the enormity of sorrow of mankind, the global sorrow of mankind. And if you respond to that according to your conditioning, according to your memory, then you are acting in you are then caught in an action that's always time binding. The challenge and response that demands no time interval. I wonder if you see this. Therefore, that is instant action. Right? So that's what we are inquiring. That is, what is the root of sorrow? We are not trying to find out the cause, the, but the very substance, the very nature, the very movement of sorrow. As we said, so fear is time. Fear, we said, is the movement of thought. Thought as measure. So thought is the response of memory, experience, knowledge, and that thought is limited. And so it is a movement in time. So if there is no time, there is no fear. You understand this? I am afraid I might die. That is, I might in the future, I am living now, but I might die. So that, that is time interval. But if there was no time interval at all, there is no fear. I wonder if you see this. So in the same way, is the root of sorrow time? Time being the movement of thought. Time is thought. And if there is no thought at all, when you respond to that challenge, is there suffering? I wonder if am I this is rather please again let's forget science fiction, and also forget, put away for the time being, 
your ideas about time, sorrow, fear, and all the rest of it, your conclusions, what you have read about sorrow and the reincarnation, everything, forget all that, and begin again as though you knew nothing about sorrow, as though you really, though you suffer, have no, no answer to it. Then we can begin together. But we are so conditioned to put sorrow on somebody else. Christianity has done that beautifully. Go to church and you see all the suffering in that figure. Christians have given it all their suffering over to somebody. And they think by that, by that they have understood the whole circus of sorrow. And in India and the Asiatic countries they have also another form of evasion. Karma, and I won't go into all that business. So here we're not doing that. Here we're trying to face the actual movement at the moment of sorrow. And to be completely, choicelessly aware of that thing. We are asking, is time, which is thought, is that the fundamental issue that makes sorrow flower? I wonder if you understand all that. So we are asking, is thought responsible for suffering? Not only the suffering of others, the brutality of others, the total ignorance of this whole movement of the Self, is that the movement of thought, thought being the past. There is no new thought, there is no free thought, there is only thought, which is the response of knowledge as experience, stored up in the brain as memory, and that response. Now, if that is the fact, if that is true, that is, sorrow is the outcome of time and thought. If that is a fact, not a supposition, then you are responding to sorrow without the me. Aren't you? The me is put together by thought. My name, my form, how I look, my qualities, my reactions, all the things I've acquired is all put together by thought, surely. So that thought is me. Thought is me. So time is me, the self, the ego, the personality, all that is the movement of time as me. When there is no time, you understand, when you respond to this challenge of suffering and there is no me, is there suffering? I wonder if you see this. 